welcome to this training session on machine learning algorithms. In today's session, we are going to learn about k-means clustering. Let's imagine we have these data points which are spread across this two-dimensional space. The aim of k-means clustering is to group together these data points into distinct groups or clusters. The first step to do that is to identify the number of groups or clusters. So let's say in this case, we want to make two groups or two clusters. Once we have identified the number of groups, then we need to identify the center point or the centroid of each of these groups. Now, once we have identified the centroid, and in this diagram, we have shown it by the colors red and green and with triangular shape. Now we have the centroids now, we have the number of groups now. The next step is to identify which data point belongs to which group. So the way to identify that is to calculate the distance of each data point to the centroid. So let's imagine this data point, we need to calculate its distance to the red centroid and then we'll calculate its distance to the green centroid. The data point will move to the group for, with the nearest centroid. So the distance to the red centroid is obviously smaller than the distance to the green centroid for this data point. Therefore, this data point will move to the red group. Similarly, for this data point, obviously the distance to the green centroid is lesser than the distance to the red centroid, so it will move to the green group. So basically, all the data points will move to their nearest centroid groups. Now, how do you mathematically calculate this distance? This is one of the most common distances that is calculated as the Euclidean distance and the formula for calculating distance is shown on the screen. So it's basically for a two dimensional space, let's say we have two points P1 and P2 identified by the coordinates X1, Y1 and X2, Y2. Imagining that there's the X axis and the Y axis, what would be your distance? What would be your formula for the distance? It's X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared, the root of this. Now this has to be extrapolated to an n-dimensional space. So the formula can be used for n-dimensional space as well. So once we have calculated this distance using this formula, we'll identify the nearest centroid point and we'll move that data point to that group. Now visually how we can identify this is basically join the two centroid points together with a line. Then the next step is to draw a perpendicular line on the line joining the two centroid points. Now, all the points that lie to the left of this line, that is this area, will belong to the red group. All the points that lie to the right of this line, that is this area, will belong to the green group. Now, once we have identified which points should belong to the red group, which should belong to the green group, let's color them that way so that it's easier for us to identify. Now, when we look at this diagram, we can see that there's this one point that is overlapping between the two groups. So there's no clear demarcation for this point. So that is the reason we cannot stop here because we have not got two distinct groups yet. So we'll go for another iteration here. When we say we go for another iteration, the iteration in the second iteration, we are going to move this centroid point so that we can have a better demarcation of the two groups. Now, how should we identify the new positions for these centroids? So first of all, before that, what is a centroid? Now, in mathematics, for a triangular, what, how do you calculate the centroid of a triangle? A triangle has three points, A, B, and C, in a two-dimensional space, identified by coordinates x1, y1, x2, y2, x2, y3. How do you calculate the centroid of this? The centroid is calculated by this formula. So it's basically a mean distance, or it is the center of this triangle or the mean distance of this triangle, the mean point of this triangle. So similar thing we have to do, we know where all those data points are lying in the group that we have identified. We are going to calculate the mean point for that group and we are going to move the centroid to that point. So again, if it is n-dimensional, we have to keep on adding. And this way we have to identify the mean for that group. So once we have identified the mean of that group, we are again going to follow the same technique. We are going to calculate the Euclidean distance and then we are going to identify to which group, which data point belong. And visually, by joining these two centroid points, drawing a perpendicular opponent and then identifying to which group, which data point will belong. Now we can see here that these two points, these we had previously identified belonging to the red group. 
but now with the new uh, scales that we have it is seeming to belong to the green group so now we have to color this green so two points have moved to the green group and two points have become lesser from the red group so again again we can see that there's this point which is not clearly belonging to any of the group so there is an overlap here still so again we'll go for another iteration another iteration again we need to calculate the mean of this group now the group size has changed because two points are moving from this group to the green group right and this group has become bigger so the mean will again differ so once we recalculate the mean again we'll follow this method and try to see if we have a clear demarcation now so now in this figure we can see that we have a clear demarcation therefore we can stop here because now we have two distinct clusters now this is a simplistic representation in real life scenario it will be n dimensional and there will be many more iterations which might be needed so but this is a basic principle of k means clustering and how it works so if you understand this you will be able to accomplish it even in an n dimensional space so we can see here now that we have two distinct clusters and this is how exactly k means clustering works thank you for watching this video